Hey everybody, Mike Wardinsky here. Today we're going to be talking about the newest features in Lightroom Classic version 14.2. Now this wasn't a huge update, but there are a couple of features that are notable and we're going to get into those right now. Starting with the boring stuff, Adobe has made some minor performance improvements when it comes to cropping or drawing brush strokes on images with heavily edited masks. Adobe added some catalog backup management improvements in version 14.2. You can now view catalog backup locations and backup sizes in backup settings. So to see those, we're going to go over to Lightroom Classic and we'll navigate down to catalog settings and then over to backups. And when I click here, I can see the previous backups and also the size of each backup as well. If I want to see these in the Finder on a Mac or the Explorer on a PC, I would simply click on one and then go to show. And that's going to show me the exact file path of where that backup is located, whether it be on an internal drive or an external hard drive. Navigating back to Lightroom, I can click down here. And if I want to delete some of these backups, let's say I've got five or 10 backups and I don't need the older versions, I could just come down here and then choose remove. And I now have the option to remove that backup within Lightroom Classic. New tethered capture updates have also been added to version 14.2. You now have the ability to select focus points by clicking anywhere on the tether live view window while using supported Sony, Canon, and Nikon cameras. You can now also select different autofocus modes within the live view window itself. Unfortunately, my cameras are not yet supported by Lightroom Classic, so I wasn't able to test out these new features. Go ahead and toss a comment below if you get the chance to try out these new autofocus tethered capture updates. I'd love to hear what you think of them. Perhaps the most exciting feature of version 14.2 is the addition of Adobe Adaptive Profiles. So if I head over to the Profiles tab and navigate down to Adaptive, you can see we have Adaptive Color and Adaptive Black and White. And if I just go ahead and click on Adaptive Color, you can see that's applied to the image. And then I can go to Amount and choose the amount I want to add. I can make it more intense or I can make it a little less intense. When I'm happy with what I see, I can go ahead and hit close. And you can see now next to profile, it says adaptive color. I could also come back here and switch to the standard Adobe color as well. Or if I want to go back to adaptive, I can come back here, click browse. That opens the mixer, choose my adaptive color and hit close again. Now it's important to note that currently these adaptive profiles only work with raw images. So they're not going to work on a TIFF file, a JPEG or anything else like that. So by now you might be wondering how exactly do these adaptive profiles work and how are they different from the other profiles in Lightroom already? So Adobe adaptive profiles adjust the photo's tone and color, but some of the adjustments happen globally across the entire image, while others only happen to locally, such as just in the sky or on the main subject itself. So in order to do this, Lightroom creates tables, which you don't actually see within the software itself but these tables are applied to the photograph and rendered on the screen. So total adjustments are performed using something called profile gain table map. You don't need to understand that. And color adjustments are performed using an RGB lookup table. In case you're wondering, adaptive profiles work both in standard dynamic range and high dynamic range modes as well. So let's go ahead and try these profiles out on some raw images that are not edited. So I'll go ahead and click on this image over here and I'll go to my profiles, click adaptive color, and you can see it's a little bit dark and maybe not the best, but we could always move our sliders and kind of work with that. We go over to black and white. It actually probably works better as a black and white because it's a little more moody in this image. But uh, let's go over to this lion here. And I think that's a pretty good starting point. This would be an image that's pretty easy to tone. And let's check out the adaptive black and white. Again, that is going to be a nice image that's going to be easy to work with uh, just with some minor slider adjustments. And we got this cheetah. Let's go ahead and give this one a shot. And that one looks really nice. That's a really good starting point. I wouldn't have to do much to this photo simply by adding this adaptive profile. Now, Adobe has admitted that there are some issues with these new profiles. Sometimes skin tones are slightly off. Photos might show up bright or with really colorful highlights that don't look quite right. 
and sometimes pictures are just too bright or too dark overall. It's also important to note that if you're gonna use generative remove, heal, or clone tools, that it's a good idea to use those first before applying the adaptive profiles. The reason is because retouching does not automatically update the profile gain table map produced by Lightroom, and you may see faint fuzzy shadows of the original image in the retouch regions. If you accidentally use generative AI remove features before applying a adaptive profile, you can simply hit command shift U on a Mac, that'd be control shift U on a PC, and should remove any shadows or artifacts that you see within the image. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out naturemike.com for some great infield workshops, private lessons, and photography articles, and I will see you in the next video.